I'm guessing we might have a few things in common. One, you love your phone. And two, you're starting to wonder if you're supposed to hate the big tech companies that make it. Let's face it, they know too much about us. They are building technology to manipulate us, and now they seem to be in charge of free speech and democracy. It can feel pretty hopeless to push back. And some people are so worried that they think that our tech companies are just plain evil. But I don't see it that way. Now, maybe that's because I'm an economist. When I look at this phone, what I see are markets giving big tech companies incentives to create some pretty amazing stuff. And maybe it's because both of my adult sons are helping to build some of these technologies. I am very sure they are not evil. In fact, there might be a lesson from parenting here. When my kids were little and they were fighting, I never found it helped to play the blame game. In order to restore peace, what we needed to do was to figure out what each of them needed to get their relationship back into balance. And that's where I think we are with technology today. We have a relationship that's gone wildly out of balance. And specifically, the relationship between markets and the rules that govern them. Now, I've been studying law and economics for nearly 40 years, and I can tell you that there is no such thing as a free market. Markets just don't even exist if we don't have rules because markets are our way of dividing things up. And nobody wants to participate in a joint venture that doesn't have basic rules that say things like, you'll get paid what you're owed, or you'll have a right to share in what you produce or the ideas you come up with. And nobody wants to live in a community that doesn't have basic rules that say, okay, you can build your factory here, but you can't dump toxic chemicals into our water. Rules are our way of moving forward together, arms linked in this amazing joint venture of the human community. They are the infrastructure of trust. And that's an infrastructure that I see crumbling today as markets are starting to overpower our ways of making the rules. You can think of it like this. Our big tech companies are like powerful horses that have slipped loose of their reins. And they're now in danger of running us off a cliff. We don't want to shoot them. We just want to get them back in harness so they can take us where we want to go. So how do we end up like this with our markets getting overpowering our ways of making the rules? The problem is that our rules were built for the industrial revolution. And that's horse and buggy days. And they're just not up to the challenges of the digital revolution. There are lots of reasons for this, and I've been studying them for a few decades, but let's just zero in on one of them. They're really slow. Our big tech companies may be violating our antitrust laws, but the last time the US government went after a big tech company, for violating the antitrust rules, this was Microsoft in 1990, it took nearly 20 years for that case to get resolved. Our governments are just outgunned by big tech companies that have most of the data, most of the computers, and most of the engineers. In fact, when European governments created the right to be forgotten on the internet, they had to rely on Google to enforce it for them. So, does this mean that it's hopeless? I don't think so. And here's what I think is the secret to keeping up with big tech. We need to be as innovative about our rules as we are about our technology. Let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm sure you've all had the experience of looking for something on the internet, new pair of shoes maybe, and having it follow you all over the web. It's pretty creepy. It's also pretty impressive. Driven by smart engineers and lots of venture capital, that's markets solving the problem of the shoe company, which is to figure out what we want. But that solution for the shoe company creates a problem for the rest of us. It invades our privacy and it makes us feel like lab rats. But what if we could get some of those engineers some of that venture capital working to solve our problem. Do you think that with enough money and brains, 
they couldn't come up with something pretty impressive on our behalf? How about a digital fingerprint that will track your data and keep a complete record of everywhere it goes and every time it's used? Or an app like the one that colleagues of mine invented that uses machine learning to automatically read and detect violations of privacy policies? What if we could put cookies on their machines? That's what I mean by being as innovative about the rules as we are about the technology. Now, maybe you are thinking, what is a rule anyway? How can a technology be a rule? Don't rules have to be those things that you write down in a bunch of legalese? No, rules are not about words. Rules are about trust. And if a technology helps you to trust a company with your data, for example, that's being innovative about the rules. And that's the kind of innovation I think we need. I call this regulatory technology. And to me, human history is just one long story of us inventing and reinventing regulatory technology. Our earliest ancestors used the regulatory technology of conversations and gossip, music, art, stories around the fire. And then indigenous peoples around the globe invented democratic councils. The ancient Athenians invented legislatures and juries. In fact, writing itself was invented so that we could write down the rules. I know I found the right husband because he also loves to go to museums to see the first things that humans wrote down, which was contracts wills, tax records. He even got me this as a birthday gift one year. It's a replica of one of the first law codes ever written down 4,000 years ago, the code of King Lipit Ishtar. And I love this little clay tablet because it reminds me that at the same time that humans were inventing new ways of getting around, like the wheel, they were also inventing new ways of making the rules. And that's what I think we need today. We need a quantum leap in our regulatory technology in order to keep up with those galloping tech companies. So here's three ideas for what I think we could do. One, let's create those markets for regulatory technology. That means we need rules that incentivize entrepreneurs to invent those technologies and rules to make sure that that's all done under the control of our governments. Number two, Let's find, nurture, inspire, and support the currently small number of lawyers who are really innovative and ready to change the world. Too much of the profession today is resisting that kind of change, and we're gonna need to fan the flames to get that into a conflagration. And three, become a rule innovator yourself. The next time you find yourself thinking, there ought to be a law try asking a few of the design thinking questions that innovative entrepreneurs ask. How might we? What if there were a way to? What if there were a way to track your data on the internet? And how might we give vulnerable populations the tools they need to make sure that facial recognition is not getting misused by the police? I am excited about the future. I truly do believe that artificial intelligence and other powerful technologies can make the world a better place. But we have to get those big tech companies back into harness. We have to get that balance back between our markets and our rules. And I believe we can, if we are as innovative about our rules as we are about our technology.